Alright then, so hello and welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded. So, uh, this is the episode where I, uh, try to find a thing to say for five minutes while I wait for an old guy to die. That's, I suppose, a very little in literal interpretation of it. I guess I might as well equip myself with some stuff anyway, just to pass the time, because time will go while I'm in the menu. Uh, item, skills, equip, equip Celeste, go to optimize, exit that menu. So now let's go down to relic, and I didn't really think of anything to equip her with in particular, so let's just, uh, yep, those are good. <laughs> I'm sure, very sure. I know exactly what I'm doing sometimes, and that time is certainly now obviously. So now we just gotta wait. I mean, what else is there to do? I mean, I guess I could go hang out at the beach or something, but uh, probably not really useful. Uh, just gonna walk back up and hope I ended up in front of the house still. That would be embarrassing if I somehow managed to get myself all out of whack there. Hmm, yeah, I should probably turn the lights down here, it's getting kind of, uh, dark. Which you'd think would be pointless when I'm doing a blindfolded challenge, but I kind of blindfolded the laptop, so... As I'm sure I've mentioned, like, eight million times by now. Don't really know what else there is to say. I mean, I guess I could go check on Sid or something, but he's just gonna say something pointless. That's the uh, way up. Right one, up one. Uh, well, uh, very engaging, Sid. But I suppose I'll be leaving now. Guess I'd better uh, stay to the right just to make absolute sure that I am at the door at the right moment. <laughs> There's just really nothing to talk about. Just listen to the tides that are kind of masquerading as a music track. silence, just nothing else. <laughs> Hopefully the relics I threw on are decent and I didn't throw on anything that's gonna somehow be randomly dangerous to me. There's not really anything important in terms of defenses that I can do with relics in vanilla, so uh, I'm not too worried about equipping the best things possible, which would probably be like a white cape or something, to give her a small chance of dodging stuff and little bit of extra defense. Let's check on Sid, see if he's dead this time. Hello, Sid. Walk around you. I'm not getting anything. There we go. Good, he's dead. Alright. Now, I've mentioned this before, but... Yeah, cutscenes don't have any real emotional impact when you're not looking at them. I mean, the music's still what it is, but... There we go. Menu has been opened. Walk up to the top. I don't have the swim shoes equipped anymore. Everything got de-equipped when I jumped off the floating continent, including Go go, which is a glitch that gives me an extra boomerang, but whatever. Let's talk to the second corpse of the day, and I've definitely talked to it because I can't go into the menu here. Not that I would have expected myself to mess up, walk up, and take one step back down, then talk to the bird left to you. Not at this stage in the game, anyway.
It's been quite a while since I spent three attempts messing up Arvis's house. Even though I tend to mess up the simple segments uh, actually more often because I'm like, oh, whatever, it's not important if I get everything right because it's so short. If I fail, it's not going to make a difference, so I barely practice at all, and it generally comes back to bite me in the butt, but, you know, hubris, I guess. I know I don't have to do any menu tricking until uh, Rachel's theme comes on. So, uh, lots of waiting in this segment. How's your today day today? How has the weather been? Has anything been going on recently? Oh, there we go. Out here, I mean, Canada in the winter, so lots of snow, obviously. It's okay. The cold the only starts to get irritating at all once you've uh, pretty much hit like negative 20 degrees Celsius, so. At negative 10 it's totally fine. And it doesn't usually go down as low as negative 15, so. Alright. I've reached the top probably. Left. Down, left, down, left. Okay. I'd better take this cautiously because I don't want to accidentally walk past the event trigger. That would be kind of awkward. Alright, have I made it? I, I have. Can't open the menu anymore. It's always the indication that I'm in a cutscene. It's a good thing to, like, constantly point things like this out, even though they're probably obvious for people who have been watching the series from the beginning, but still, I think, probably a decent idea to point it out, just in case somebody's just randomly decides, oh, I'm gonna come in on episode, like, 60, whoop-de-doo, and then suddenly they're like, wait, uh, how do you know that you're not in a menu, you cheating hacksaw? I mean... Well, that's not exactly it. Like, how would you know that you're in a cutscene, rather? But I suppose... Inevitably, some people are going to think that no matter what, because... You know... Sometimes people just can't... Believe their ears and... Equip, skills, item, save, even though... There's nothing supernatural about it, but... Well, next uh, segment, next mini segment that is, that took like no effort. Well, I was planning to go to Albrook, but guess what I need from there? Absolutely nothing. One, two, three. Oh no, it's a battle. So dangerous. I don't know. Especially with that probably preemptive strike. Four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Not a whole lot of cleverness I can do to get around counting steps there. So might as well just bite the bullet. It's two seconds from the start anyway. I got an encounter, whoop de doo And it still didn't hurt me. So yeah, I'm sure this is... I'm sure that was just the most enthralling thing you've ever watched. I could probably take the cake for shortest segment, actually. I should've just crammed it all into one. See you next time!